if you see the uh, the the brown is the rain fed area where irrigation is less than 40%. This is a district map. You see a strong correlation between a, a rain fed areas and then the darker areas is the poverty where wealth is low, right? And then the tribal. There's a huge uh, good correlation between rain fed lands, poverty pockets, and then the tribal areas. This is the poverty geography of India. Is the rain fed areas of India. So there's a huge mass in it. So, we are not only talking about land degradation, we are talking about poverty also. Next please. And then one of the problems is, we think these are, these are not productive. So, entire focus of the government right from 60s, when it started employment guarantee scheme, is to treat these as welfare measures. You create employment, you create, and then later on uh, uh, river valley projects came, then you arrest soil degradation because dams are getting silted. Uh, then came watershed program because you have climate change and all that, then, uh, then soil conservation, whatever. It's never linked to people, it's never linked to production. But even to date, if you look at these areas, this is the kind of contribution these areas are making to the economy, the agriculture economy. 40% of rice comes from rain fields, 89% of millet, 73% of cotton, 69% of uh, uh, oil seeds and pulses. 62% of the farmers are on this. 62% of the farmers depend on rainfed areas. 52% of the gross crop area is in the rainfed. Now, these are the metrics. Yeah. This, so, these lands are productive. These lands are producing. These lands are actually contributing to the nutrition of the country. So, what is that they are investing on these lands? Next please. If you look at the investment patterns, you know, if you can just digest this map, uh, this, this graph for a while, this is the, the, the first blue lines of the fertilizer subsidy every year. 70,000 crores rupees given as fertilizer subsidy every year. And then you know how much government has invested on rain fed lands? The, the circle one, you know, prior to uh, 11th plan. If I aggregate all the investments government has made from 60s up to the 11th plan, it is not even 20,000 crores, 22,000 crores. And in the 12th plan, uh, it's, it's about another uh, uh, 12,000 crores. And now, Watershed programs are systematically dismantled. There is no watershed program in the country. We may have this thing, sorry for saying this, but we see in the government, there is no, no budgets in the Telangana government, no budget in the AP government, no budgets in the Odisha government. This is all previous expenditure, previous releases, now closing down. Taking the figures, you know, 60 million hectares, it to be treated, 30 million hectares were treated roughly. To treat 60 million hectares, you need 90,000 crore rupees, given the standard of 15,000 rupees per hectare. But what we are investing annually is not even 2,000 crores. 2,000 crores, including salaries, including the, the, uh, the implementation structure, everything. Right? So, this kind of an apathy, the, the country's production, country's nutrition, country's farmers, everything is in balance, power is in balance. But if you come to investments, they are not in balance, they are somewhere else. Okay. Next please. You look at the procurement side. The the uh, the, the dark uh, pie chart there. It shows the procurement. What, what it shows? All the procurement, MSPs, public procurement, is all rice and wheat. Is all irrigated crops. The small little speck of uh, 1.2 or something. That is the procurement of core cereals, millets. In spite of government of India or our state government saying so many things about millets and all that. There is no system established for, for providing MSP, for providing procurement, for go downs. Nothing is there. Everything is everything is actually rooted into the green revolution and procurement for the green revolution, supporting green revolution. So, if there is no government support systems for the rainfed areas, how do we face this issue? How do you solve the problem? And these are the investments. Uh, uh, now, if you take some three four years we have taken aggregated all the investments, you see 40% of it is going to the rice and wheat procurement uh, and then about 35% is going into the fertilizer subsidy, analogous is another one. If you look at IWMP, then uh, how much percentage? You know? so, so, the words does not match the purse. You know? Investments are not commensurate with the, the preamble of all the plants and all. The preamble says so much about poverty, so much about uh, dry lands and impacts, but this is not matched with investments. Next. Next. Look at this anomaly. If you want to develop an area irrigated, 
if you want to develop a hectare of irrigation, you invest 6 lakh rupees. This is old data. If you take the current data, it is much, much higher. Per hectare investment of in irrigation is this much. And Buma uh, Ganji uh, per hectare of investment in watershed is 50,000 rupees per hectare. What are we talking about? The investment disparities. No? So, issue is what do you do if rainfed lands get the equal investment? Investments at parity with the irrigation irrigation uh, development, then can't rain fed areas be more productive? What is the rate of return on the investment? Now this we need to look at. Next please. So what is the fundamental problem in rain fed areas? It is basically if you look at it, there is a drought. What is drought? If you actually disaggregate drought, so there is a drought at the onset, right at the initial uh, crop establishment, as a, uh, uh, during the crop work period, that is the medium term, the prolonged drought cycle. So there are four types of typology of drought that you what is that you need to make the drought? Not insurance. Your insurance cannot save farmers from drought. Insurance can the most give you uh, cover your cost of cultivation, cost of inputs, not in the cultivation. Insurance cannot protect farmers from droughts. What do you need here? One or two irrigations. You see the gaps in the rainfall. If I have one irrigation in that gap, then my crop is secure. So we, in our work, we, we always see two to three, two irrigations you can secure the crop, three irrigations you can make it productive. It's just, just 40,000 liters, 50,000 liters per acre, one irrigation. If that much is available for a rain fed farmer, two times in the crop season, you can mostly secure the rain fed area. Mostly these people can get out of the rain, uh, or the, or the uh, vagaries related to drought. But what are we looking at? No, next place. Yeah. We are looking at water as dams, as bore wells, but we never looked at water as rainfall. Now you know where the rainfall is harvested the most? It's not in dams. After total rainfall, how much is actually going where? If you look at it, most of it is captured in the soil profile. Soil profile is the largest reservoir of water. But what are we investing in soil profile? You you, you get back to the first image you know, uh, mentally. In that, in that plot where the farmer is filling, if you remove the organic matter, what remains is the minerals and sand. Minerals and sand cannot hold moisture. Right? What you need to hold moisture, you need organic matter. But you take all the programs that Dr. Earth has listed, none of the programs, not in a single paisa, is actually invested on organic matter production in the dry lands. Without organic matter of the, uh, uh, matter in the soils, you cannot harvest rainfall in the soil profile. So what is the point of harvesting rainfall in the dams when I can harvest in the soil profile? If I invest same amount of money in, in soil profile, I can hold more water. It doesn't need energy to lift. It directly used by the crop. Right? So there are, can you go back? You have several ways of actually harvesting water and then increasing the soil uh, uh, profile moisture and all that. No, these are line farm ponds. So farm ponds are, are taken for recharge. What happens to recharge water? It is recharging bore well. Who is using the bore well? Person who is using access. If you take the dry land, only one third of the people have access to the uh, bore wells. Two thirds of the farmers, seventy percent of the farmers do not have access to uh, bore wells. Then what is the point of recharging? Instead of recharging, you you need to provide water to them for their crops. Then how you provide? Not by recharging, by actually having this kind of a uh, water harvesting structure where they can directly use. Right? Next please. This is actually fire rating. No, in case of drought, water is mobile. When when the city of Delhi, when the city of Hyderabad, uh, Jain Sabne Batarai, uh, can get water 150 kilometers from Nagarjan Sagar, can't we take water 2 kilometers within a village? So it's possible. So if you think water as a mobile, then lot of options open up in the dry lands. Next please. Uh, the, the, that one is a fire, fire engine actually carrying water and providing support irrigation. You know? It is actually the rate of return on that is higher. If you actually care to calculate the rate of return on the investment that you make in protective irrigation is far higher than the any dams in the in the country. Any dam you take. The investment on the uh, on the irrigation compared to investment on protective irrigation. Protective irrigation far higher rate of return. But we don't have, we never thought of mechanism. How you do the productive irrigation? You see this thing. Here, the, the bottom most thing, this is actually two drums carrying water 
without rain, there is no rain. Okay, there is some in antecedent moisture. The carrying water along with the drum, the drum they are actually showing the seeds. When the rain comes, then it, it catches up. Okay, this is uh, raw water. Sorry. Then that is actually they sow and they 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 uh, they apply water when there is a initial breakdown of uh, initial drought spell. Here, water is taken through the tanker and applied on the rows. There are multiple ways, but all this requires investment. Where is investment coming? Right? But we don't invest on it. This is all farmers left for themselves. But we invest on, uh, if I am a borewell owner, I get the electricity free. I get the horticulture subsidy free. Uh, per crop, more drop, I get sprinklers and drips. Everything is free. I have assured market. Market is, I have fasal bima yojana. If I am a rain fed farmer, where am I? I don't have, I can't use electricity, I can't use fertilizers, so there is no investment infra infrastructure required, there is no investment on biomass, there is no investment on soil. You completely lush out of the system. So, what is the land degradation that we are talking about? No? We need to first address this perspective, these mental images of water and soil. Next, please. This is the groundwater situation, you are all familiar with this. Irrigation now, groundwater has taken over the uh, surface irrigation. The groundwater is the most predominant form of irrigation that the in the country. Okay, there are already these are stretch, uh, stretched. All the red spots where where groundwater is possible, right? Where groundwater is possible, it's already exploited. We are not even talking about having uh, one third of the two million One third of the farmers only have water access to groundwater. Two thirds of the farmer do not have access to water. They are waiting to dig one more bore well. Groundwater is already exhausted. What happens is two-third farmers also dig borewells. You are actually creating a competitive digging and competitive loss of investments. It's a huge loss of investment. If groundwater level goes from one level to another level, it means crores of investment gone out of uh, Italy. Right? So, next please. This is one uh, one example. Now, if you have a, a, an area, if you identify an area, so all the pins are where the borewells are. Are the dialects are there? In all the groundwater exploited situation, you have irrigation around the borewells, while all the all the drylands are suffering droughts. They need one irrigation, but that irrigation is not available because the farmer there has a ownership on the borewell. The person doesn't share with others. So how do you solve it? It's a common issue. Access of the groundwater is, is needed for the for the rainfed farmers, not for paddy in the borewells, right? So, how do you actually solve this? Are we solving it? Are we addressing it? Do we have a policy to address it? Do we have an investment structure to address it? Are the issues? Next please. So, this is one experiment we did. We actually asked the farmers, we negotiated the farmers to come together. We actually put a, uh, uh, put a, uh, a borewell grid, I mean a pipeline grid for all the area and said every farmer in that, uh, in that area have a right on the productive irrigation. To save their crops, they, they have a claim on three irrigations that the borewell farmers also agreed to share. So, the, the investment should be about 10,000 rupees, two years, two to three seasons. I think the entire investment paid back. I, in, in all my 20 years of work on this, this is the most prosperous thing, I mean most influential thing, great prosperity to the farmers. Just sharing of water. But here investment is required. The pipeline is an investment that, that came from the government. So, AP government is scaling up this into several villages. No? Uh, next please. So, uh, this lady, Tulsama, this was the this was the landscape, the dry land landscape. This is the situation. When the borewell grid came up, she negotiated with another farmer, asked for two irrigations a month, just two irrigations a month. And they started growing the sesbenia underneath the crescent. Huh? And then she accessed drips and sprinkler from the government. She is earning 3 lakh rupees in a, 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 a year. Just she, uh, access to water through a, some kind of a mechanism of social engineering, negotiation, plus investment, actually brought in, look at the tree cause, around, around this half acre plot, everything is bad. It's made possible. So, dry lands, the point is, in the dry lands, if you invest, if you create access to water, there is prosperity. Next please. Uh, this is, there are lots of other things, but I'll stop here. Uh, these are these are the work that is uh, put forth by revitalizing rainfed agriculture network, RRA network. It's a pan Indian network. There are several civil societies, media persons are also there, and then academicians and all that. Uh, Rainfedindia.org is the website. 
if you are interested, you can uh, browse through. There are a lot of case material available. Uh, you can also join the network. Thank you.